Nothing on nobody but those. Oh, there you go. That's a good one, dude. Right, oh, there's two of them. All right, let's take them. Oh, there's a big one. How about them apples, boy? I'm trying to keep your five out of How about them apples, boy? Oh, dude. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. What's up, guys? Welcome to the channel. I got a real special one for you today. We're going to talk about this awesome bait by Bait Sanity. This is the Explorer Gill. I mean, look how well this fish ate it. That is what's up. We are in upstate New York. I'm gonna show you guys uh, a few things about this amazing bait, the setup, how I'm fishing it, the different applications, how versatile this thing is. If you guys love this, subscribe to the channel, turn those notifications on, and buckle up. Should be a good day. Ah, oh, man. Fishing is dope. Bait Sanity Explorer Gill. Where do you start? This is a very dynamic and versatile lure. The possibilities with this bait are seemingly endless. One of my favorite features of this bait is its interchangeable tail design. It's an ingenious design here that allows you to quick change these different tail attachments. And I believe there's one, two, at least three different tail designs. This is the Adam tail. This bait right here features the boot tail. Then you've got the straight standard glide tail. And each one of those tails is gonna cause this bait to swim in a different manner. But that's an amazing feature because as anglers, we can keep experimenting with different swims and retrieves and cadences and ultimately get the same lure to do a vast array of different things. You could fine tune that to match the behavior of the fish and get them to respond in a positive manner. So today we've been doing really good fishing this Adam tail. It gives it a pretty wide glide, kicks out really good. Uh, it, it's got an interesting hydrodynamic and it seems to have a lot of momentum. So every time it swings, it kind of swings back and it really accentuates the way this thing glides and kicks out on the backside. And Mike also caught one utilizing the standard tail on a floater. And that's another thing I love about this bait. It comes in two different sink rates here. And you can tell right here on the bottom, it's labeled for you, for easy identification. S for sink, of course, F for floater. So if you're fishing over shallow vegetation or you want to keep it up high and get those fish to draw out of cover, Mike was fishing a floater and had that fish come up to it. The nice thing about these two, you can use the Bait Sanity tungsten weights and add fine-tuned weights to this bait to get it to sit a little lower or truly suspend. If you're fishing colder water and those fish want that bait to just hover and stop like a lot of those bluegill do that you see swimming around the docks, they'll just kind of hover and sit there. You can mimic that with a floater. You can get it weighted just right to where you can stall it out indefinitely. And it comes in a variety of colors. Obviously this dark bluegill looks hyper realistic, especially on clear bodies of water like we're on today. These bluegill that are up high in the column are dark. So this is matching the hatch really well. There are also times when a highly contrasting bait is the trigger. So it's good to have different color options here. You've got several match the hatch options depending on what kind of sunfish you have in your fisheries. And if you guys are fishing the northern latitude up here, home of the mighty rock bass. This is a really cool color. I think this is a bunker pattern, but it looks a lot like the, the rock bass in that light tan coloration. Uh, very common prey species here in the north. Lots of options. And I've noticed today that a lot of these bluegill in this lake have that chartreuse tip. So if they're really hyper focused on bluegill and are keyed in on that chartreuse tip, that small little adjustment can make all the difference in commitment level. Oh, all of them. Net. Oh, I got you. Go oh, fight. No, we've got one hook. Yes. 
Dude, the Explorer Guild is getting waxed right now. So this morning, me and Oliver pulled up to this little spot and he had one come up on this Bait Sanity Explorer Guild. And we kind of just ran with it for the rest of the day. That's a nice one. And we ended up having a nice day. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Good day for you guys. Appreciate it. It's his birthday. It's my birthday. Yeah, it's the happy birthday. Thank you. So me and Oliver found this row of docks that were a little bit deeper than all the other ones. It had some grass and vegetation right outside of them in like 10 feet. And he had just caught one. And so I picked up his other one that was rigged up on the deck. And I started fishing it as well. And this fish actually came up out of the grass line where the grass meets the transition pretty much. And he smoked it. And this is actually a floating version. Oliver's throwing a sinking one, so I don't think it really matters. It's there's a ton of sunfish in here and they all are very dark like this. There's a beautiful one sitting under the dock right now. It's just black like these two colors that we got. Let's talk about the tackle breakdown here. First thing you guys might notice is that I'm using a BKK snap. This is rated to 121 pounds. It's a very strong snap. It's actually stronger than the last snap that I was using. So excited to have a different option for snaps here. Okay, to that I've got a heavy leader. This is Defiant Shock Leader, 35 pound fluorocarbon, 100% fluorocarbon. Those fish will not see. We're fishing pretty high visibility water today. I'd say six to 10 feet, depending where we are on the lake. That has not deterred them from eating this thing. And to that, I've got 70 pound Defiant Smooth Casting Braid. Now this is where it gets fun. This is a Douglas LRS C784F. Seven foot eight, rated 12 to 20 pound, half to two ounces so it has been the perfect delivery system for this bait in and around this shallow cover seven foot eight is not too long i can backhand cast i can make roll casts, i can make really short accurate casts with this bait and get it real tight to these overhangs or adjacent to the docks fishing it in between the gaps of the pontoons it's a fantastic rod this lrs series has a slower taper than the x matrix series it's a fantastic rod all around for this class of hard bait. If you're fishing a hard bait with hanging trebles like we are today, this is a fantastic rod for this application. And we've got a Gancraft Mago 003, high gear ratio. I can burn this bait, pick up line. I can fish it fast, we're covering some water today. So I like that faster gear ratio. And I've also swapped out the trebles. And today we've got those BKK Spear 21 treble hooks. And I've also experimented with the BKK Fangs, 63 UA, I believe. And uh, I've been playing around with different size hooks, ones, one ups, depending on how I want that bait to sit. I'll put a bigger and a thicker gauge hook if I actually want that bait to, to sink down a little bit. And I'll go with a lighter gauge, smaller hook if I want that bait to stay up. So a lot of different ways you can fine tune these baits. And this is another amazing feature on these hard baits. I don't know why all hard baits don't come with this rotating hook hanger. Why, why is that important? Well, that's important because when a fish eats this thing and tries to, to spin and head shake, it's got less leverage. It can't utilize that big side profile of this lure to help leverage the bait out of its mouth as easily as one with a fixed anchoring system for that hook eye. And it's the little details that really matter, guys. When you're fishing for one to six bites that we've got today on this bait, you want to maximize and capitalize on every single one of them. Oliver, 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 stop. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate you, Mike. <clears throat> Five, go to the back deck, boys. Five, come here. Come here. Five, come. All right, let me walk you guys through how I fish this bait. And it really is a process of elimination for me. Today we're fishing in and around cover here, floating docks, overhanging trees, some swim platforms. So the ability to make those short roll casts accurately with this Douglas rod is important. And I'm just gonna experiment. I'm gonna try different things until those fish react and show me that I want it fast or erratic, or I want it slow and steady or a certain cadence or a type of gliding retrieve and rhythm could be the trigger. Don't be afraid to experiment with these baits, guys. 
I'm utilizing a combination of the rod and sharp handle turns to get that bait to do what I want it to do. And those of you guys that are fishing in clear water, pay attention to how it feels when you're swimming this bait. Because when you go fish dirty water or low light conditions, you should be able to feel what that bait is doing and visualize exactly how it's swimming due to the correlation of, of that feel. Because trust me, dirty water fish eat this too. It does not need to be absolutely gin clear. This is my first time throwing the explorer gill. I've never thrown it before before being on Oliver's boat. I realized that the key for me today was the small twitches, subtle, nothing too erratic. I, I realized that like even if I just slow retrieve it, how it just kind of swims right below the surface. I was getting them fish, they were fully committed from the beginning. Like, there was no let me think about it, they were just coming up and sucking them down. It's a big end. Because you know only those California bass will eat these. <laughs> Look at that. Let me check that out guys. Don't be intimidated. We are in the Northeast now and I'm throwing a quote unquote big bait. And I've caught a couple in the sub three pound class. <laughs> Don't be intimidated. Mike's seeing the benefits of that. Smile, you're having a good time, man. Yeah. Being from the Northeast, I didn't throw many big swim baits. After meeting Oliver, you know, I started to dabble in it here and there. It's not really a confidence bait. It what should I say? It wasn't really a confidence bait until I started to fish and become more comfortable with it. And I've realized that even the little fish will eat a bigger bait. To me, this would be a smaller bait. This isn't big. This is the size of my hand. It's not really all that big. But I have realized that even on the bigger eight and nine inch hard baits that I would still catch little two pounders, quote unquote little two pounders. I would still generate bites with that bigger bait. Oh, you guys can't be afraid to throw quote unquote big baits anywhere. You guys have sunfish, you have bass that will eat them, just like that. Hey, okay, that's a pound and three quarter fish maybe but through parallel to that dock there swam out ate it if you're sun fishing a system with bass of any species they're getting eaten look at that little guy